recommend it, babe? A lot to be. All right. A lot to be. Yeah. Uh, going yeah. live. He'll be coming out here oh, to cool. do some interviews. All right, welcome everybody to Good Medicine Way, Albuquerque, New Mexico. We're locked down in COVID once more, so everybody being careful. We were just talking about that here, how some stores are having masks required and some are not. I just came from a store and it seemed like about half the people were masked up. So be careful out there and make sure you stay safe. Uh, we got to live through this not die through this so we pray for all those that are are suffering for this time now so but i want to welcome everybody and those on facebook live and on zoom i am hoping that my cousin is able to show up on this here a guy from michigan so we'll look for him uh coming on a little maybe a little later maybe some people get all wrapped up in the time change so we'll I, I told one person, I says, the only way to, that I figure out what time it is somewhere is I ask uh, Siri. <laughs> and she gives me the right answer, and then I know how to get connected on a Zoom link. So, so we want to pray, uh, opening prayer here. Get your back yep. right. uh, We're going to place a little bit of, like a sweet grass. Place a little sweet grass on the directions on the drum for us on here. So, Father, if we place them on to the east, the south, the west, the north, to the earth, to the sky, and to our hearts. Father, we thank you for another day that we can come together at Good Medicine Way. It seems like this is getting very common for us to do now but we are so glad that we do have the virtual way to gather together and pray and sing and bring um, kind of a social life to our virtual world and all the friends and family that we have i pray that they are be uplifted during this time because it's so hard to get out and share we wish we could travel more but we give this time to you in christ's name amen So we are on the, the land of the uh, Hopi people here, always recognize that, the, the Hopi people here. To the south of us, we have more Apache, and to the west of us here, we have the, the Navajo tribe. So, uh, But I'm a Potawatomi here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and from my uh, study here, there are over, probably now, there are probably over 130 different tribes recognized here in Albuquerque so it's very very diverse here so with that let's see we're going to go to a little clip are you going to do or the song come and get uh, your let's see. well we're doing uh we're just we can do the songs first oh yeah because it's for the creation for the, um, okay. this we can do all right okay <laughs> We're all watching the cursor fly across the screen, everybody.
son who died upon the tree so we could be made free so we could be made free you way hey yo guy you way you way hey yo guy you singers together and we've got five or six more people sing, singing on the drum here it'll be good uh, so announcement time here now uh, a friend here uh, told me that I'm, I might have said uh, the, the Hopi people instead of the the Pueblo people so I want to correct myself that we're on the land of the, the Pueblo people here but I was trying to make a point there that we got the Apaches the Navajos and the Hopis in our area out here, along with 130 some different tribes recognized here in Albuquerque. Uh, I want to make a, a note here too that uh, we do have a PayPal uh, uh, that you can find. I had trouble finding. I think it's under announcements that you have to click on, and then there's a PayPal uh, link there that you can donate to Good Medicine Way. So if you could do that from time to time, we'd appreciate that. And, and uh, the Lord will use the money well, and we'll use it well here as we uh, minister here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, other announcements. I have a, a friend in Tennessee who is uh, 
taken it on himself to help raise money so that we can have some Bibles here to give out when we do go live, finally, and do our concerts and when Jonathan's here. So uh, Jeremy Leslie, is he's got a Facebook post, and he's tried to raise uh, $1,500. And uh, with that money, we'll bulk order uh, Bibles, and we'll get them for basically half price then when we do do a bulk order like that. So right now, the last time I seen uh, the count there was uh, like $795 already raised already. So if you're able to do that too, uh, we appreciate that. And, and uh, he's calling it his faith fundraiser that he's he's doing. He uh, After talking with him several times, he's really encouraged by the, the work that we're doing here and the messages that we you guys are all hearing. And so he was really encouraged and he's talked to me a couple different times. So... Uh, you could do that. Uh, pray for me. I'll, I'll be meeting this week with an ecumenical group here at First Presbyterian Church. They want to hear uh, about the Native American uh, ministries that we're doing and also how they may be able to get involved more. Uh, and just a couple of days ago, I met with a uh, social concerns group at uh, St. John's United Methodist Church. And with that group there, they were they didn't have any idea that they hardly had any Native ministry outreach at all. So it was a good good time to share with them that uh, it's needed, and they are very open to finding ways that they can help us. And they're in, encouraging me to put together a list of things that they can uh, participate in. Uh, so they will be probably be sharing. Um, with us from time to time on our Facebook and Zoom. Uh, so that's that's something. Else. Any other? We got the women's study on Wednesday. Yep, we're finishing up Thomas King's The Inconvenient Indian this Wednesday, and then next Wednesday we will be starting up Jesus and John Wayne by Kristen Dumay. So um, yeah, all the women are invited to come to that. It's Wednesday nights through Facebook on Zoom. It's seven o'clock Mountain Time. Yes, and that book is also, I'm listening to it on Audible right now. I do that on my walks in the morning and evening, so I'm uh, about a quarter of the way through that book. It's uh, very interesting, uh, uh, very deep in some ways. It really captures a lot of <laughs> the life that I lived, basically the things that I was involved in, listening to uh, speakers like James Dobson, knowing about Oliver North and all that happened here, because, you know, me being a Marine, I really followed that kind of close when that was happening. So there's a lot of things that, you know, probably open your eyes to a lot of things that uh, you're probably unaware of evangelicalism and how it's really affected us here. Uh, any other announcements? Uh, uh, I guess we could say that, like, we are, we are not going to have our opening here. Uh, next week. So if you haven't got that announcement, yes, we are going to postpone until another day when uh, Albuquerque and our state here is in the green again. So that may come in another month and a half or so. We're praying that it will. You know, all the you know cases go down and we pray for our, all those that are working in the hospitals to help the people that have got the, the uh, virus. So we'll probably shoot for somewhere in November. So just to kind of pencil it in and pray for us that those dates will open up for us, that we can continue. We do have T-shirts coming, uh, hopefully next week. Uh, we're all going to be sporting the Good Medicine Way T-shirt here. So, uh, And those, uh, if you'd like one of those, I think we're even talking about how we might be able to get some of those out to people. So we have a speaker tonight, is a friend of mine from Gallup. He's going to be with us in a little bit, uh, Rob McIntosh. So um, Heather Jim, are you ready with us for Creation Insights? Hey, yeah, I am. <laughs> um, so for today, I was thinking about yesterday, actually, because I was watching a couple of sermons um, from a different church that I've been part of uh, since I was, well, more when I was a student at UNM um, rather than now. And, uh, but it's really good insights and uh, messages. And yesterday um, uh, they were talking about creation and how man you know, named all the animals 
and how the Lord was like, that's actually a blessing that we were able to name all the animals and name all of the, um, the life that's here and on the earth or even then it was in the garden. So, and he said something that really, well, the pastor said something, his name is Pastor Ryan. He said something that kind of intrigued me because um, usually I hear like uh, scripture about Genesis and, the, and one of the things that caught my attention was when he said, um, uh, go forth and multiply and subdue. And I was like, wait, what, what does that word mean, subdue? Because there's like different um, words and translations and I didn't really understand what that meant. And then Preston looked it up for me and it meant to do something quietly. Like you, you don't have to like be loud about it. And I thought, wow, um, quietly understanding nature is what I got from it um, and not being so loud about it. And I thought, wow, this is totally different than what um, I see now with what in regards to like nature and all of the, all of the things that have been happening since uh, colonization and so um, yeah that just made me realize like how much the relationship between us humans and as uh, towards the animals and all of creation is very fractured and broken and a lot of people don't understand how we are relationally related to all things and all things to us too so yeah just um, understanding that creator has a bigger picture than what we can have in our minds as opposed to you know just um just this one wall of scripture but it, it, it goes into a deeper meaning than that and i was hoping to get the f and v version of that but i was like wait a minute it's not out yet <laughs> so we have to stay tuned and wait for that <laughs> so i'm just glad that you know that i was able to um understand that and uh give grace but also you know um praise to what you know, creator be and god has made and has done throughout you know, history and even now to today. So that's my creation. Right. right. Well, thank, thank you, Heather. Uh, yeah, I did mention that uh, November, that, that would be uh, probably the earliest if, it, if COVID is really, but uh, we have talked also that if, if things are, are not very well this winter and usually during that time, you know, the infection rate goes up and the flu season comes around, and they're saying that that could also be a, a bad time for us too. So uh, we're even thinking that springtime could possibly, you know, we may hold off until until then too. We really want to be responsible and in the way that we present our ministry here too. We don't want to be uh, getting anybody infected because we want to rush into meeting too soon and too early. So with that, we're going to go on and we've got the... Uh, uh, this week and Native America. First, a little bit. Yeah. Oh. Okay, one well, little a little treat for you right now. So, hold on to your seats. Yeah. For those of you who have been watching Res Dogs. Yeah. <laughs> you should have had that sign. Everybody, you guys push your hands <laughs> towards me. Push your hands towards the television. Uh, um, let's do the other part, and I'll see if I can get this straight. Okay, <laughs> we're we're watching the uh, the circle of death spinning here, so we're gonna we're gonna continue on with the. Uh, uh, let's see, this week in Native America, we'll we'll go with that, and then as uh, soon as they're our uh, video clip comes up, then we'll jump over to that. So, John, yeah. you take us into that. So, we were hoping to um, start this off with a little bit of humor and levity as we um, commemorate, um, recognize um, this week a, um, a grim and tragic event in Native American history. Mm -hmm. It was this week that um, the great um, Lakota leader, Crazy Horse, was killed by um, troops under a white flag um, in very... Um, controversial circumstances. I think it's a, probably the gentlest um, description we could give of that. But we want to 
um, recognize um, Crazy Horse, his leadership, and um, the contributions that he made to the Lakota people. You want to try now, or you want to go to the next one? You can do the next one. Okay, and so while we have that, on the one hand, we have a very um, somber you know, recognition. One of the things we want to do also is this didn't happen last week, but last month, a significant event happened in Spokane, Washington, in which a street was renamed, um, Fort George Wright was renamed to a new name, and I want to make sure I get it right, um, and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right, but it was renamed Wistox Way. And previously this street was named after a man who had basically did a ger uh, General Sherman type um, scorched earth policy attack on the Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, Palouse, Yakima, um, Native Americans af in the midst of a conflict in 1858. Um, lynching and killing people as well as slaughtering anywhere from 700 to 1,000 horses, destroying crops, and this street was named after him. And so um, there's been a lot of um, pushback against that, and with consultation with the Spokane tribe, it was renamed Wistok's Way, and um, Wistok is a, was a Spokane um, tribal member, a female, who was married to a Yakima subchief who was one of the people that was lynched by right so many years ago. So an attempt to at least recognize a wrong from many years ago. All right, well, thank you, John. Uh, we're still... Oh, the lawyer. Are you crazy horse or sitting... No. Okay. If, any, if anybody's worried about this, who's familiar with the show, uh, I did edit this to make it PG. So. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Oh, young lawyer, are you crazy horse or sitting? No, no, no. I'm not one of those awesome guys. No, I'm more of your. Uh... I'm more of your unknown warrior. Yeah, you know my name? William Knifeman. <laughs> I was at the Battle of Little Bighorn. That's right. <laughs> I didn't kill anybody, but I fought bravely. Well, I didn't actually fight. I actually didn't even get into the fight itself. I came over that hill real rugged like, <laughs> I saw Custer like that, that yellow hair. He was sitting there, son of the morning star, that guy right there. So I went after him, but then the horse hit a gopher hole over and squashed me. I died there. This horse, actually. And now I'm meant to travel the spirit world, find lost souls like you. How's the sound, everybody? Are you hearing us well? Thumbs up if you're good. Everybody? Yeah, I just got it. Yeah, we got it. We got a laughing emoji for that. So uh, all right, <laughs> yeah, everybody, laughing emoji. Yeah, all right. So if you haven't seen the show, uh, uh, I don't recommend it. <laughs> As your pastor, I, I don't recommend it. But yeah, it's it's funny. It's uh, it's popular right now, and if you get a chance to see it, just take it with a grain of salt. That uh, you know they're. They're, they're trying to, to make some statements in there, and uh, uh, probably not the kind that I would want to make, but uh, take your time watching it, and uh, I'm trying to softly say, uh, yes, uh, go it's at enough. it, go at it carefully. So it, it is kind of funny to watch. Um, uh, right now we want to go with uh, Preston, who's going to be reading uh, Creator's Word. He's going to be reading Acts 17, verses 20 through 29. And we'll be reading that through version. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you haven't got yours yet, there's still time to order. Uh, it's, uh, we've been lucky, and we got ours some time ago, and we're, we're so glad about that, too. Yeah, he's got his. All right. Here we press So... Um, I'm going to jump a little bit before because there's a couple <laughs> there's a huge sentence in the First Nations version that it will add to verse 20 so explain this new teaching to us they ask him 
For your message is strange to us, and we want to know its meaning. The people who live in the wandering places, Athens, will spend all their time telling or hearing about something, some new things. So a small man, Paul, stood up in the center of Mars Hill at Phothicus and said, people of wandering place, I can see that all things you are a very, you, you are a very special people. As I walk around, I saw some of your sacred objects. One altar has a message carved into it, dedicated to an unknown powerful spirit. Then, so then, the one you're sacredly called without knowing is the one I will make known to you. The great spirit is the one who created the universe and all things in it. Since he is the rightful ruler of the world above and the earth below, he does not live in lodge, lodges built by hand, human hands. Creator does not really need human beings to do things for him. Since he is the one, the one who gives all people life and breathe and everything we need. Beginning with, with the first human being, he made all tribes and nations. He wanted people to live all over the face of the earth. He decided ahead if of a decided ahead of time when and where each tribe would live. He had this so that all people could look for him and find the trail that leads to him. Creator is not far away from any of us. It's through him that we live, walk, and have our being. As some of our, as some of your song makers have said, we are children of the great spirit. Since we are his children, we should not think that he is made of gold or silver, or wood or stone. He's not like the carvings that people have thought up in their minds and made with their hands. Because I, this is the word of the Lord. Well, thank you, Preston. Thank you very much. Uh, right now, we're going to be um, going to be introducing our our guest speaker tonight, a friend of ours from uh, Gallup, New Mexico. He's a pastor in Church Rock, a Creators Fellowship, doing very well out there. Been there many several years now. Uh, Rob Rob McIntosh, and got to know him a little bit because he back in the days when we were having the the uh, with Tony Family Camp in Oregon, they got wind of it and they just said to their their group there in South Dakota that we got to attend this and we got to see what this is all about. So uh, we were all at family camp and sitting around and as we were gathering early on, we're some of the first ones to arrive, uh, all of a sudden this roar came down the road. And I can remember when I, I first heard of the Hell's Angels coming to our town in Michigan and the roar of the Harley Davidson motorcycles as they went down one of the roads. It was just amazing. But uh, not that they're the Hell's Angels, but they're, 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 they're Heaven's Angels coming in. So there were four motorcycles. So Rob was one of the four motorcycles that that came in that day and just rumbled in and, and they, they came to the first family camp then that they attended and then they came again next year and the next year they brought their whole families and it was quite a, a eye opener for him and then it was uh, basically after that they really got a call to go out and spread the word and that's probably what led you into going to out to Church Rock here in Gallup so uh, Rob has been out here for some time now we've had a chance to meet with him, sing with him, uh, fellowship with him at their, their service out there, and become a good friend. So we want to turn it over now and want to say a special prayer that God's blessing will be on you, Rob, as you give us the word, and I'll let you do more introduction of yourself. Thank you, Rob. Well, thank you, Casey. I, I, uh, Remember, remember that meeting and that time so well. We learned so much during that time. Uh, it's it's just totally changed my life. 
Um, let me begin by introducing myself, who I am and where I'm from in the traditional Navajo way. Um, my name is Rob McIntosh, um, and uh, I live and work amongst the uh, Bitani people here in Church Rock. Um, I am from on my mother's side of Scottish descent on my mother's mother's side and uh, Huron and French on my mother's father's side. Um, and on my father's side, um, uh, Scottish uh, all the way around. So um, that's who I am, that's where I come from. Uh, to give you a little bit of history on why uh, the journey that God has brought us down, um, I was working in South Florida, Miami, Florida, and we were working uh, with an organization called Florida Baptist Family Ministries, and we were providing um, foster care for young ladies who were pregnant. And when I say young ladies, we're talking teenagers, uh, babies having babies uh, is the way we explained it. And uh, we were providing a home for them. And one night while we were getting ready to take them to church, uh, one of the young ladies was having a struggle with what was going on. Uh, and it escalated to the point where it just wasn't good. And we wound up having to do some things we never thought we'd have to do. But the problem was, it was all over the clothes that she was wearing. Uh, she had been making her living on the streets, selling herself. Um, and she wanted to go to church dressed that way. Uh, and I was so frustrated, so conservative about that whole thing. I let it escalate. Uh, you know, I went to one of those Bible colleges where if your hair touched your collar, you were got a demerit. You had to wear a tie to lunch. If you didn't, you didn't get to eat. Uh, ladies had to wear a skirt that went below their knees. Uh, and when I say below their knees, they would test that and measure it. And if it didn't pass, you didn't get to eat. So it was a real conservative school, and I wasn't about to let this young lady go to church dressed that way. And in that process, I realized I blew it. I cared more about how I looked and how the church looked and how things were than really what she needed to hear. Um, and it started me down a journey of searching at everything that I knew, everything that I believed, everything that I taught, you know, uh, and, and, uh, it's caused me to make a few changes. If some of you had, know me, Casey does. My hair, well, it's, and my wife just cut it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I totally changed my outlook on things. But before we were getting started, we were talking about the COVID and, and all that's taking place. Um, you know, I'm in the, in the habit of, when things happen, asking two questions. Uh, God, what are you doing? And God, what are you teaching me? You know, what, what is the creator doing to society through this situation? And what is the creator trying to teach me through COVID? You know, when things first hit, I was frustrated. You know, we, our church was five years old and we were just starting to really make some big momentum growing into a second community. Um, God was working and moving. Uh, we were excited about where we were going and COVID hit and I, I was just purely frustrated. And that was, you know, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. And then as we all know, October, things started to climb again. And then through November, December, and January, I did 16 funerals for people. Um, and that changed my world. You know, uh, we saw the, the stress that the health professionals were going through. You know, we've got several doctors that we had partnered with. Um, we saw everything that was going on. And I was looking around at the same families over and over again because of these two communities. Um, 
and and doing funeral after funeral after funeral after funeral after funeral uh sometimes one or two a week uh at one point i had three scheduled in one day uh god worked it out that i didn't have to do that two for the same family on the same day um and it totally has revamped and caused me to relook at what we're doing with church. A uh, year and a half ago, two years ago, Casey and I were on a, a phone call and, you know, I was seeking some wisdom, how to transition uh, uh, our community. And uh, he's, he gave me an example of moving a piano in a church. Casey, do you remember that story? How you move a piano? One inch at a time. You know, just a piece after piece after piece after piece, um, which is a great concept. But I was looking at doing funerals for the same family, 16 people. That's 16 people and when I, that didn't know the Lord when they died. That's 16 people that got sent me to give the good news that didn't get to hear it. And church doors were closed. Uh, we couldn't have meetings, signs were on the doors, no visitors, go away. Only time I saw them was when I was burying a loved one. And that just tore my heart out because I realized I was the messenger that God sent and I had failed to give the gospel in the most timely fashion. So that has totally changed um, my passion for culturally, not only culturally relevant ministry, uh, but contextualization, but really getting the gospel to the communities. Because what's going to happen? Are we going to have another pandemic? Is it going to be COVID variant XYZ that's going to blow through? And I'm going to be right back there again. So <clears throat> when Casey asked me to share, you know, I've just finished a manual to train people um, to rethink how they do ministry. And I was thinking, do I want to share this with them? And I said, no, because you know what? I'm preaching to the choir here. You got it. You understand. Uh, th that's something that, you know, that's a battle I don't have to, to fight. But I do want to share uh, a passage from there that God made uh, that led me to. And that's that Acts chapter 17. And I'll share it in the way that I do a lot of our church in the fact that this is a story of the Apostle Paul. And, and you know, Paul was the first really big missionary. I mean, he started a bunch of churches. Uh, he was the author of the majority of the New Testament books. Uh, totally, uh, you know, when it comes to church, uh, dealing with things, you can look at Paul's writings and see what was done. And, you know, and he was, you know, the first one to really push into the Gentile world. And so uh, Acts chapter 17, and in those verses, there's some really big things there. Um, and, uh, you know, honestly, I could spend weeks on these verses, um, just, you know, one or two verses and spend a lot of time, but I want to do a, a, a thousand foot view uh, of what's taking place. So as Paul is going through the city and he's speaking to the men of Athens, he sees uh, an idol, what we would know as an idol um, that the, the Athens people worship and they entitled it to the unknown God. Uh, and that's in verse uh, 23. He says, for while I was passing through and examining the objects of your worship, I also found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. Therefore, you worship in ignorance. This I proclaim to you. One of the cool things about that passage is Paul is setting an example of apologetics that is key for us in working in our communities is building a bridge with something that people already know. You know, uh, when I can go into our communities and build a bridge with something that they know and understand 
and participate in, um, it's a great thing. And I'll share a little story. Casey, you'll laugh at this um, because, you know, that's one of the first things we did there at Wachoni was do uh, sweat. And uh, uh, I, I invited one of the ladies in the community to our church and she goes, Pastor, I know you and you're a good guy, but I will never come to your church. Um, and so you can just stop asking. I said, you know me too well. You know I'm not going to stop. And she goes, well, how would you feel if I invited you to one of our sweats? And I looked at her. I said, I'll be glad to come. When do you want to have it? I'll be there. And her jaw dropped because she never expected a pastor uh, a white pastor to boot to be able to say, I'll be there. But what you're seeing in what Paul is doing here, he is being the master of apologetics and building a bridge to what the people already know. And that's sort of an example that's set by Jesus. Um, you know, in the manual, I write up uh, uh, eight different instances where Jesus shares the gospel eight different ways with eight different people because it built a bridge to them. Uh, and I'll read those to you. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, uh, uh, Jesus at that time began to preach and say, repent. So in Matthew 4, he says, repent. In Matthew 8, um, he says, go and believe in Matthew 8 22 and he, he says follow me in John chapter 3 he says truly I truly I say to you you must be born again uh in John chapter 4 you can read where he talks about he's the spring of living water um in Acts chapter 16 and uh, he actually says believe and you will be and he used the word saved then in acts chapter 8 he says uh if thou believest with all thine heart so you know the gospel never changed just jesus said it a different way he built an amazing bridge uh with all the people saying it in a way that that built a bridge instead of a wall just like the apostle paul did in verses 22 and 23 and we'll get moving along a little faster. Uh, the creator does not need our participation. You know, in verses 24 and 25, it says, the God who made the world and everything that is in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not well in temples or uh, made of hands, nor is he served by human hands, since he himself gives to all people life and breath and all things you know god could have saved the world just as easily himself you know but he chooses man to use it he chooses man to to share the good news and share the gospel and that's a task we are all given uh it's given to us here in church rock and creators fellowship it's given to you all there, the good medicine way. You know, when you think about the last two commands that Jesus gives us in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, it says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all people. Um, that command is not just to white people. And it's not just to go to white people, white man's way. It's actually saying, to go into where people are, go where they live, go where they do life and tell those people about me and show them how to be a disciple. Uh, you know, we as white people, and I'm going to use that term loosely um, because it's more than just white people that do this nowadays, um, feel that in order to reach a person for Christ, We've got to take them away from where they are, take them away from the lifestyle they have, take them out of uh, what they are doing to share the good news. 
Well, that's totally opposite of what the example that Jesus said, not only said, but did. He sat with sinners. He sat with prostitutes. He sat with tax collectors. He went to where they are. And if we're truly going to reach uh, the Navajo, the, the, the Peblos, the Hopi, the Apache with the gospel, we're going to need to go where they are and talk with them where they're at. You know, that First Nations version has been a life changer in our church. You know, I bought one case and I've given one to every family in our church. You know, I struggle with preaching from it, but we start every service with reading a passage just like you all. Every, every, and I'm going through John and I'll be there for probably two years. And so we will read that passage from John. And one week after having it, one of the men came up. He's a, a former Marine. Um, or I should say he's still a Marine, but no longer in service, if I put that correctly. He came up and said, Pastor, I love it. I can follow along. I know what it says, and it means something to me. Um, it totally opened the door. And now when I preach from it, from you know my English version, they got both open right in front, and they're, they're comparing it, and they're studying it, and they're carrying it with them. One of the men who works in the tribe, uh, up in Fort Defiance has taken extra copies to work. So he has them with him there where he works. Um, the reality is uh, the example that Jesus set uh, and the challenge that he has given us is for us to go where people are. He is choosing to use us to reach uh, the world with the gospel and we have to do our part, and our part is going to where people are. And the point three of this uh, is creator made it all, you know, verses 26 and 27. And he made from every one man, every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth. Uh, and having determined that their appointment in times and boundaries and their habitation, you know, as white men, um, you know, and I shared a little bit of my other history last week, we got this concept, we're right, you're going to do it our way. And, you know, when I share this verse, when people come out and train with me on how to do missions, and I explain to them, you know, God made every people group, whether it's uh, the First Nations people here in North America, the tribal people in Africa, uh, the, the Asian people in, in Korea and China, God made them. God created them. God made them who they are. And he made their nations and he set them up. And in Revelations chapter 5, verse 9, you know, he's not going to come until every tribe and every tongue has been reached with the gospel. And we better get on the stick and get it done. And that's the calling that God has put uh, on my life. Uh, you know, we talk about all the things that our, our Navajo people need. You know, I live with it every day. Casey, you've been, uh, I think Brian and your wife have been at our church and you've seen our community and you see the hardships that our people live with. But the greatest thing I can give them is the gospel. The thing that's going to change their life more than anything else, more than me building them a new home or giving them a new place to live or all these other things is to know when, when their final day comes and they start their, their, their spiritual journey, they're going to be able to make that journey into the heavenly realms. And uh, that is the passion that God has put on my life verse 27, that they would seek God if perhaps they might feel for him, or one version says grope for him. Our people are looking for answers. They're looking for hope. I mentioned I did 16 funerals in October, November, and December. All those people lost hope. Very few of them died with COVID. Most of them just gave up. 
drank themselves to death, quit taking their medicine, quit taking care of themselves, they lost hope. We need to help our people realize hope is found in what Jesus did and his internal plan for them. Because you see, God didn't send his world to condemn people, but God sent his son into the world that they would have an eternity with him. And that's the good news of the gospel. That's what God is placing on my heart. And I'm going to do whatever I have to do. The apostle Paul says, I become all things to all men in order that I might win some. So I grow my hair long. We work on learning the language. Uh, we play drum in the morning. Michelle plays Jonathan and Casey, uh, uh, Jonathan and Terry Wildman. And uh, on Sunday mornings, um, I even play the flute once in a while, as bad as I am. But it's all building a bridge so that the people can know that I celebrate who they are, who God created them to be, that they, I might hear the gospel of what Jesus, the creator, uh, sets free has for them. Uh, and that's what I wanted to share with you all today. Do you all have any questions? Yeah, folks, if you got any questions, just uh, uh, go ahead and ask it. Or type it on Facebook. Type it on Facebook if you're kind of the introvert. And I know that's very good for many people. I, I've been in many Zooms and a lot of questions come through texting, texting it in rather than uh, voicing it. So that's, that's always good as well. But Rob, that was very good. I know we got a lot of work ahead of us. And uh, how was that sweat? Did you get the chance to go to that sweat? She never invited me. Uh, she was more flattered that I was willing to go. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe uh, maybe we can do one out there someday. Maybe uh, the folks out there at the great. I know uh, we do it at the Brethren's in Christ mission out there uh, with the the treatment program. But I know that that program is also moving. I think towards Kirkland now. And uh, so we're, I mean, I'm eager to take a trip out there to see what they got going because I, I think the Lord's opening doors for more work out there for them with the Navajo people. Uh, any other questions, folks? None? None. Hello. Well, you Preston. Answer. Oh, it's Preston. Preston, you're thinking. Now, <laughs> how is the language classes going then? With uh, you, what are you using? Are, are they the Bible or your teaching language or helping them uh, to write it? Uh, c come again, uh, Casey. What was your question? Uh, how are the language classes going with the, the group there? I know some know it well, some. Uh, don't and some want to learn it it's it's unique um you know most of uh our people uh michelle is doing much better with the language than i am i do a little better with the cultural uh you know the teachings and the philosophies and some of those things uh but michelle is doing really well with the language um one of the biggest challenges we're finding with the language uh is I hate to say this, is that some of our people don't even agree on how to say some of the things. Um, and it's, it's uh, we tried to do songs in, in language and there's some songs we can't even do in, in traditional Navajo because they can't agree on the right way to say the, the words. Um, which, which, and I keep telling them, and you wonder why I can't learn the language. You guys grew up with it, and you can't agree with how to say things. <laughs> Got to do some songs in East Navajo and some songs in West Navajo, right, Preston? Would that solve it? Exactly. Um, let's go with this. <laughs> there are many, many people that have been been integrating in mixed marriage and from East and West and North. and West. So my dad says thus, my mom says yes for snow. They're the same word. 
and so it is, it's wherever I'm at, I have to know where, who I'm listening to. And there's also several different words for several things. It's just pronunciations. Yeah. I understand that. And there's just little tiny pronunciations that are going to be like, it's just one word difference. Just one letter difference. That just drives me nuts. But yeah. then sometimes when I'm at a different place for one day, it drives me nuts when I have to go two hours south from my mom's place and listen to it to the Navajo as I'm listening to them and be like, oh yeah, they say it this way. I have to calm myself. It's like a small culture shock for myself too. Yeah. So, you know, a good example we, of that. We have to deal with it. A, a good example of that that I've noticed here, which is a big one, um, and I, I still work with it, is on East Navajo, it's Yate. West Navajo, it's Yatehe. Whoa. <laughs> whole H in there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, I don't know. You look at like a, a person from New York and Boston, that they're not that far apart, yeah. but those are pretty severely different accents. Yeah. yeah. Not to mention to throw in like Louisiana and Texas oh, and all of the rest yeah. of that. Throw Minnesota in there too. Like you got a whole lot of different dialects going on. So. It's so it's very common across all the cultures that God made here. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, we can't let it be a, that much of a hindrance. But uh, come to some common, common ways. Maybe, uh, maybe sing one song in Eastern way, and then the next song sing it in the Western way. Uh, have some balance in it, but. Uh, Move forward, I think, as that don't let it be a hindrance, that's for sure. Laura, Laura Church says there's a Navajo hymnal with piano, music, and, and lyrics in it. Yeah. There's actually uh, some people when you listen to it, my uh, song, and sometimes they will agree with certain ways of singing it because it's actually rolls off the tongue better or it just spoken better. That's when they find the agreement when especially when you have to go into a gliss or a high note when there are times when just using a certain phrase will make it get up there faster. Oh. All right. Uh, so right now, you, there is no service at your at the church right now. Is that right, Rob? No, no. We are actually doing three services. Oh. To be able to comply with the 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 number restrictions, we're doing three services in three locations at three different times. Okay. Uh, so yeah. that's keeping, you know, we're keeping under the 15. Um, you know, the only time my wife and I are not in our mask is when we're on the stage, um, which is, you know, eight to 10 feet away from everyone. Um, but uh, yeah, we're doing three services. Uh, we, you know, like I said, we had those funerals and what we found is the hardship of being separated uh, caused as much harm as the COVID. So I'm trying to find a balance being, of being able to provide hope, encouragement with safety. So, um, that's that's what we're trying to do. Yep, I think we're all having to get creative. Yeah. Yes, we are. are. If if I knew everyone in our community had internet, um, we would be doing more of this. But most of our community doesn't have internet, which is why school didn't work for mm. our kids last year. You know, it's just it's it's. You know, we've spent a lot of time finding creative solutions to difficult problems. Anyone else got a comment or comment or question? But uh, if not, Rob, we appreciate the work you're doing out there. Appreciate your friendship as well. And we look forward. Um, to let you know, uh, Rob and Church Rock was going to be one of our locations to do our Jonathan Miracle concert tour. So we had to postpone all of those those concert locations too. So a lot of disruption, but I would rather be safe than have people get COVID. 
So when, when time comes and things are much better, we will do this concert tour. We will make this happen. And maybe in God's timing, it'll, the, the fruits of it will be way beyond our expectations. So we pray for that. So we'll give it over to uh, Brian and, and lead us in another song here. Yeah. 
off by uh, Leah Grover tonight and thank you everyone for coming on. Leah? All right. Thank you everyone on Facebook and Zoom for joining in. Thank you Rob for speaking. And thank you Creator for gathering us all here together tonight to be reminded about the goodness of your very good news and renew our just promise and activities of, of sharing it with others. Open the doors uh, in our lives in these strange, challenging times. Give us good creative ideas uh, for how to uh, communicate your wonderful news in this coming week and the months and years ahead. In Creator Sets Free's name, amen. amen. All right, everyone, thank you for being with us Have again. Have a good week, everyone. Yes. Thank Rob. Mm. Hope to yes. see you sometime you. soon. Kimberly? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See you all. See you all. Take care. Facebook. Bye-bye, everyone.